Good afternoon. I'm uh, a little late getting this lesson out this week, uh, or li actually last week. Um, run into a few difficulties, I'll explain here in a minute, but before we get into this, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word to guide and direct us. Lord, we ask for your spirit to, to lead us through our study. Help us each and every one to learn something today from your word. We know it, it always speaks to us. Uh, help us to be doers, not just hearers of your word. And Lord, we pray for all those that may be unsaved, that may hear your word, um, either here or somewhere today, Lord. That we pray for each and every one that your spirit would draw them, your mercy be upon them. They would accept you as their Savior today. Lord, again, we lift you up as our friend and Savior, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. These things we ask in Jesus' name, and only your will be done, Lord. Amen. Uh, well, I ran into a few little problems last week, and it kind of it kind of goes along with this lesson. Uh, I maybe didn't deal with them as good as I should have, and certainly I don't think that I did, but... Um, it kind of goes along with, with what the lesson is about um, in this week, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Um, in the scripture, there's uh, several references to athletics, um, making kind of an uh, analogy of the Christian uh, life being uh, kind of like a race or an athletic event. Uh, I jot down a few references here in Acts 20, 1 Corinthians 9, Galatians 2, uh, Galatians 5. Philippians 2 and Timothy 4, uh, there's probably others, but I just jotted down a few of those just to, to give an example. And in this lesson today, he refers to the Christian walk as like a race. Um, and I'll read that first verse, and we'll get into this. Uh, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Uh, the wherefore uh, looks back at the previous chapter in chapter 11, the faith chapter, where we have all those heroes of the faith, and he says we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And I would say that's referring back to those um, witnesses that we, we looked at in ha Hebrews 11, uh, many of them, the Old Testament saints, and they were believers in God, and their life proved that. They showed their faith by their works. Um, so he's saying, look, we're, we're compassed about with all these witnesses, and that's what I feel like he's referring to here, uh, most likely. And uh, since we have all those witnesses surrounding us, what should we do? How, sh how should we live our life? Uh, he's telling us to run this race. Uh, since we have all these, these witnesses, the, these are our, our, our proof, our inspiration. Um, and we need to run our race uh, and using them as an example. And we also have a better example. Um, you, and he tells us that there's a, a couple of things we need to lay aside. Um, the weight and sin and uh, looking at those things uh, what is the weight and what is the sin um, what are those things well I look at weight as something that kind of like uh, something that came on me uh, this past week had a little bit of a little bit of trouble and uh, had some internet trouble and uh, in last week's lesson I had uh, I think a self-inflicted problem I had uh, had the um, Wi-Fi turned off on my phone. Uh, it might have been where I let it run down too low and didn't realize I was getting that low, and it may have been conserving uh, energy. I'm not sure. Uh, it might have done that on its own, or I might have just hit it by mistake. You know, that's usually my problems are self-inflicted. I'm usually causing my own problems. Uh, but anyway, I had that little problem. But then after that, the Internet went out later on, and I, I had uh, a lot of trouble... Uh, trying to get that restored and uh, kind of still working through that but anyway I got enough uh, data on my phone now to, to do these so I've, I've got part of the problem solved uh, but in dealing with all that and getting frustrated and getting aggravated with the folks I was dealing with 
uh, I had to apologize to them for, for being a little bit um, stern with them, I guess. I, uh, I just kind of told them what I needed to do and what, what I was going to do if they didn't do what I needed. And uh, we just couldn't come to terms on it. But anyway, um, I should have handled that better. Uh, but my point is, that was a kind of a weight. And um, it, it did hinder me from studying. I, I had that on my mind. I let that consume my mind and, uh, you know, trying to fix problem and trying to, <clears throat> to deal with uh, the folks that told me one thing and then another. Uh, but not that I've always done everything I said I was going to do either, but... Um, in life, I can think back at times when I had good intentions and, and didn't follow through with it. Uh, but they told me that, you know, uh, what they was going to do and uh, then didn't do it. But uh, anyway, my point is, dealing with all these problems, sometimes uh, you can let that weight you down. And he's saying, lay these things aside. Well, sometimes weight are, is things like that that comes upon you that you... Um, uh, you have no control over. I had no control over the internet going out. That just one of those things that happened. And um, sometimes weight can be something that you just pick up. It it could be something that uh, that you want to do that's going to conflict with the ministry. Um, I may want there may be a hobby or something I I like that I I want to do, and I may get consumed with that and let that interfere with um, with the ministry. I like, uh, you know, like fooling around with music, looking at YouTube videos, um, watching different people play instruments, and uh, <clears throat> then, you know, trying to do that myself and, and not succeeding. But anyway, those things are, are fun to me, uh, just fooling around with it. And if I get consumed with that, even though maybe I'm practicing a gospel song and I should be studying the lesson, that is a weight that I've picked up that I should have left aside. It's not maybe necessarily a weight that's a sin, but uh, I may let it become a sin because I've let it become between me and what I should have been doing, studying this lesson. I let the weight of dealing with the Internet problems get between me and studying my lesson last week. Uh, we have to be careful of those things, and it's not easy to lay aside a weight. Sometimes um, folks get sick, uh, they can't help that. That's that's just one of those things. Now, sickness in general um, is something that's come upon the world as a curse and way back from the Garden of Eden. Uh, you, you, you age, um, uh, as I look at myself in this video here on my phone camera, I, I can tell I look much different than I did when I was 16. Uh, gray hair, wrinkles, and... Uh, as the old saying goes, it turns gray and turns loose. There's less of them than there used to be. But that's, uh, that's part of the curse of sin. Uh, but God has also provided us a way away from that uh, through Jesus Christ. But that sickness in general, yes, it is a result of sin. But we can't look at every sickness uh, as a chastisement of God. And this, this chapter deals with chastisement also. Well, sometimes uh, a sickness may come upon a person as chastisement. And I'll give an illustration of that. Uh, but it's not always. And now I don't want folks to, to listen to this and maybe get the impression that every time something bad happens in their life, it's the chastisement of God. It's not always. To, but now God has used things in people's lives as chastisement. Uh, the huge illustration is the children of Israel when... They were overthrown by Babylon. We refer to that a lot, and that was a, that's a biggie in the Old Testament. Uh, obviously, God let that pagan nation over, overpower them because of the evil that was in their lives. And uh, they rejected God, and God just let them go on without God. Uh, well, God was still in their life, but, I mean, he let them pursue that evil, and they seen what that evil would do to them. Uh, God is not always chastising a person when they get sick, but sometimes it has happened. And I want to give an illustration of a time in the New Testament that <clears throat> that, that is a possibility. <clears throat> I'm going to look over in uh, 1 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 through 30. Speaking of the Lord's Supper, <clears throat> it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show, show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. Uh, let, me, let me read it again. I don't think I read it very good. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For when he eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Uh, so there's a time when someone has taken the Lord's Supper uh, when they shouldn't have. Uh, they were unsaved. It's not how we, we take that in reverence because of what it represents, uh, the, the death of our Lord. Um, there is another one uh, I want to look at. It'd be Second Corinthians. Got it marked here, not very good, but I do have it marked. Second uh, Corinthians twelve verses seven through nine, speaking of Paul's thorn in the flesh. Now Paul had seen these visions. He had been allowed to be caught up to the third heaven. That God had done that. And <clears throat> that uh, we don't know all the details. I don't understand everything about that, but we know he's seen these visions. Uh, Paul, uh, the way he writes, it seems like he doesn't even um, understand all about that vision. But that was a tremendous thing, that he was allowed to see that uh, you and I haven't seen. And it prepared him to be able to do what God wanted him to do in the ministry. <clears throat> and certainly he has... Uh, went tremendous in the ministry uh, writing uh, uh, a huge portion of the New Testament um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, read verses uh, 7 through 9 out of that 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians now here's why he was given this thorn in the flesh and, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given me a thorn in the flesh what was it? Well, we know this much right here. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that was. Uh, we don't God uh, okay I had a little breaking connection there with, <laughs> with my wireless internet now uh, more internet was uh, but Paul was given this thorn in the flesh <clears throat> uh, not because of sin but to keep him from sin to keep him humble enough that he could be beneficial in the ministry if we become exalted we're of no benefit and certainly Paul had a lot uh, that he could uh, brag on as far as his service to God. But there again, Paul had other things. In in the 11th chapter, he speaks of a lot of the, the, the things that he went through, the persecution that he went through, the problems that he had. Um, <clears throat> and they they weren't due to sin. They were due to the his, his faith in Christ, his ministry, his preaching. And Christ has said that if they didn't like me and they're not going to like you if you're one of my disciples. That's what he told the disciples way back there. So the same goes for us. <clears throat> so not all problems are due to sin. Some are, though. There are some times when uh, something may be upon us because of a sin in our life. Uh, <clears throat> you know, David's life, um, is one that we can look back to. Uh, I didn't think about this uh, Sunday when we went through this lesson at church, but I didn't think about David uh, being a, g a good example of this, you know, the problems in his life. We can 
look back to his life. Some of them were due to sin. We can look back at uh, Numbers chapter 12 talks about when Miriam was struck with leprosy because her and Aaron had spoken against Moses. There was a time when a sickness came upon her because of a, of a sin in her life. <clears throat> but please don't, don't um, just think because every time something bad happens to you, it is the chastisement of God. But you have to rely upon the Holy Spirit because uh, things comes upon everybody. Um, the main thing is not to let, uh, not to let the weight, the problems in life get between you and God. That's when it can become sin. Even if it's something that's just not um, uh, not brought on by yourself. It's out of your control. But if you allow that to get you down and get between you and God, then it can become sin. But there's weight that we're just going we're going to have to deal with in life. Um, he says to lay aside the sin. Now, the sin can be something that uh, you've done or something you've left undone. Uh, something you're supposed to have done that you didn't do. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to flip over to uh, first, uh, first Corinthians chapter 10. How do we handle these temptations? Well, we it says you know to lay aside the weight, lay aside. Uh, the sin. So how do you handle these temptations? Um, I'm going to read verses 12 through 13 out of 1 Corinthians 10. Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as, as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be attempted above that you are able but with the temptation, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God is going to make that way to escape the temptation. Do I always pick that way? Now that's the, that's the question. Uh, I haven't always, but I'm going to flip over to Second Corinthians, and it is chapter ten, also verses three through five. <clears throat> this is a a scripture that David Jeremiah has referred to. Um, and and it's a tough, it's some tough verses. Uh, we wonder, uh, how can we get this going in our life? It's easy for me, as, as I said Sunday, to, to tell people, well, yeah, this is what you ought to do, but... I find it really tough to do <clears throat> for me. Now, look what the scripture says here about bringing our thoughts into captivity. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, and I, as I said Sunday, I have never been able to bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. That would be great if I could get to that point. But that's what he's telling us to do there. Now, so what should we think on? Well, Philippians 4, 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. When we allow our mind to get <clears throat> bogged down with the wrong kind of thoughts, that's when we're going to fall into temptation. We might yield to a temptation. We might fall into sin. And it's hard to to get your mind off the bad things. Just like I say this week here, with all these problems and having these uh, difficulties trying to resolve them. 
uh, <clears throat> like I say, you can get overwhelmed with these things. You can get um, drug into something, like I say, like a hobby that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but if we allow our mind to be just filled with garbage from the internet, from uh, YouTube, from TV, whatever it is, <clears throat> uh, we feed our mind those things. Chances are we're going to get led astray sooner or later. So bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ, thinking on pure things, getting those, you know, when those bad thoughts comes in our mind, getting those out of there and replacing them with something good, that's a way to win the battle. Uh, because it says, uh, <clears throat> lay aside every weight and sin which doth easily beset us. It's easily, it's easy in this world to get surrounded with these things. Because you're surrounded with a lot of bad stuff in this world, especially now, more so than ever. And kids, are, they have so much access to so much information, good information, bad information. Uh, it is so easy to get beset or encompassed, surrounded with, with all of this. We, we're surrounded with it, and it's easy to get overtaken with it if you're not really careful. So what do we need? We need patience, he says. Run with patience. Um, <clears throat> don't give up. Uh, you know, I don't win every temptation. I don't handle everything like I wish I did. I should have. Um, but if if I quit uh, the first time I messed up, uh, like when I started working, if uh, the first time I messed up a part, I quit and just gave up and said, "Well, I'm I'm never going to do any good." Uh, I I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be working right now. Uh, I'd I'd already be done. Um, I couldn't just quit just because I mess up because I make a mistake and uh, as I've said before I've worked with people that I felt like were the best of the best and you just look up to them and uh, they're an inspiration to you and, and they would mess up sooner or later they would mess up regardless of how good they were um, even the very best would mess up so I thought well you know <clears throat> that gives me a little leeway I feel a little bit better hey I <clears throat> Not that it's okay for me to mess up, but I see that person mess up. I think, well, uh, I've kind of got an excuse for my for my error. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'm not saying it gives us an excuse to sin, but just uh, using a secular illustration here. Uh, just persevere. Don't give up. That's what he, we need. Run this race with patience. It's <clears throat> excuse me. Well, we look back at those heroes of faith, but we also have a much better um, person to look to and in the next verses he talks about looking to Christ <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry about that try to get my throat cleared here um, <clears throat> let's look at verses 2 through 4 when we get to where we feel like we're getting overcome uh, we think we got it bad and we got good in this country we don't have it bad at all it says in verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, oh, I'm sorry, the right, the right hand of, of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Christ has won the battle. Uh, Satan is defeated. He's been judged. Um, Satan is going to try to trick you up. But remember, Christ has already defeated him. Uh, don't give in. Don't allow him to get you down. Uh, Satan's going to be on your back, but God has got your back. Uh, remember that. Uh, remember what Christ endured. Uh, I heard a, a lady one time say that Christ looked to the cross with joy, but here I don't, I don't look at it like that. I'm not trying to contradict her, but um, I look, look at this with a little different interpretation. It says, <clears throat> for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. When we look at, in the Garden of Gethsemane and what Christ went through there, the agony, realizing the separation he was going to feel with the Father, and we'll never know, I don't think, the, exactly what Christ endured. I don't think it was so much 
the cross being the worst part, the, the wrath that the Father poured out upon his child uh, <clears throat> that we can't understand. Enduring separation from God. You know, if separation from God is a, for eternity in hell is the penalty for every sinner. Christ tasted death for every man and he, he endured that for every man. Can we imagine what that would be like? Uh, even if you're unsaved, you've never known the separation of God because God's in your life watching over you right now. You may not realize it, but God, it's by His mercies, we're not consumed. And <clears throat> you've never known a separation from God. God is working in our life as a witness to you. Nature is a witness. The Christian people around you is a witness. And you've never known a separation from God. God has preserved your life, given you mercy and grace for a chance to accept Him. And being separated from God is, is a fearful thing. Uh, I can't imagine the desperation that one would feel, the hopelessness that one would feel when they stand before a great white throne of judgment and God says, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Could you imagine the the hopelessness that someone would feel at that point in time? And Christ endured that for each and every person, the billions of people that have lived on this earth. Everyone's sin has been paid for. You just have to accept Christ. That's the, that is something we've talked about before. The fact that every sin has been paid for, so uh, it will be so sad to leave this life and and not be able to take what's already been paid for not to have what's already been paid for someone bought you a new car and said all you got to do is go down and pick it up and so i don't believe that and then realize one day that it was there waiting on you you just didn't go down and get it and you missed out on it that, that'd be terrible but eternity in hell uh, is unbelievable it's just um you can't comprehend the hopelessness and I think that's going to be one of the worst parts of it. Well, uh, not all problems are the chastisement of God. And the next verses he talks about the chastisement of God. And it's not a bad thing. I'm going to read verses 5 through 11. <clears throat> and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and gave, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they <clears throat> verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised, <clears throat> exercised thereby. Uh, a lot of reading there, but uh, many of us can remember our parents. Uh, they didn't just let us run and do whatever we want. Uh, Mom and Dad didn't, didn't us, and uh, I would have gotten in a lot more trouble if, if I hadn't have had a fear of their chastening. And as you grow up, you realize that uh, those in authority over you, your teachers, your parents, uh, maybe your grandparents, aunt and uncles, they, they kept you in line because they were wanting you to do the right thing. Uh, the old saying, God loves us like we are, but he loves us so much that he doesn't leave us like we are. And uh, our, our parents were looking after our welfare. Uh, if they hadn't cared for us, they wouldn't have tried to, to kept us out of trouble. And that's what God is doing. He's keeping us out of trouble. It, it, it says in this 11th verse uh, that afterward it yieldeth 
the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Uh, and it's not maybe fun when you go through it. Um, I felt chastened to the Lord because I didn't really deal very well with my internet problems, but um, I learned something from it. Uh, we have to have patience. And uh, you have to endure. You have to have that perseverance. Uh, but when, when you're going through the chastening of the Lord, it may not be fun. But you realize that he, he is caring about you when, why, at the time he's chasing you. If he didn't, he would just let you go astray. And I'm glad God doesn't do that. Uh, I'm glad that it, I can remember a time in my life I was far from, from the Lord, far from my uh, commitment I've made to him, and he didn't leave me there, and I'm so thankful for that. But now, as I said, not all problems are chastening the Lord. Paul endured uh, being beaten and shipwrecked. He endured <clears throat> being thrown in jail. All kind of things he endured, the thorn in the flesh. And Peter writes about about the problems in life. Uh, there are things that are just its common to everyone. In 1 Peter 4, 12 through 19, he says, Blood, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Now, if you're suffering for Christ, that's okay. But he goes on to say, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other man's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God <clears throat> on this behalf. Uh, <clears throat> there's a difference in being uh, having problems because you've done something wrong or having problems because you have faith in Christ and someone just don't like you because you like Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. In uh, the fifth chapter, in the eighth and ninth verse, familiar verses says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You're not alone in the fact that Satan is after you, that he's trying to trip you up. Now, he can't come and steal your salvation, but he is going to try to steal your witness. And Peter's saying, you know, don't think it's strange that, that you're enduring these things. Like, oh, uh, this shouldn't happen to me. I'm Mr. Good Guy, you know. I'm, I'm the nice fellow here. I'm, I'm too good for this stuff to happen to me. Well, he says, don't, don't feel that strange. And this stuff is going to happen to all Christians. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, everyone that lives, I, if I, can, I may not quote it exactly right. I think it says, everyone that lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Uh, it, it kind of worries me that I haven't suffered much persecution. I can honestly say that. Um, <clears throat> let's do a little overview of, of the verses 12 through 17 in, in the 12th chapter. Try to move through this. It's kind of long to try to move along here, but it, it's warning us about getting into sin. It is telling the, the Hebrews to... to to walk a straight path, to to live a, a right life, a holy life. And he says in the, the warning in, in, uh, find out here, in verse 16, it says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He says, Don't be like Esau don't sell out what you've got. Uh, you know, you've got much more in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so don't give up what you got in Christ to be like Esau and just live for the here and now. Esau was concerned about the then and there. Uh, he wasn't concerned about his birthright. It says he despised his birthright. So hang on to what you got in Christ Jesus. 
<clears throat> Excuse me again, sorry. Uh, verse 18 He's uh, referring back to the law, and, and speaking to Hebrews, the Jewish people, they would, you know, they had to lay aside the law to go with the new covenant. You can't mix them. Uh, they can't be re, uh, relying on an animal sacrifice and the final sacrifice that Christ made. You can't mix the two. Uh, it says in verse 18, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, and unto blackness and darkness and tempest. Uh, he's, he's telling, he says, you're not, you've not come to Mount Sinai where the uh, law was given. You've left that. And that mountain could be touched. And you're going to somewhere that right now we can't touch it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and he'll refer to that in just a minute. But Mount Sinai, they weren't allowed to touch it. They would die. If a beast touched it, it would be put to death. <clears throat> Uh, the law demanded death. Uh, there was not mercy under the law. And you're not come to that, he said. You, you guys have left that. And he, in verse 22, he picks back up. I'll read verse 22 through 24. <clears throat> He's talking about you've, got, you've come to somewhere much better than Mount Sinai. Much better than the law. You have something a whole lot better in Jesus who... Don't go back to Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't go back. Not go to Jesus. Don't go back to the law. Sorry, I got tongue tied there. Got mixed up. Go to Jesus. Uh, don't go back to the law. Sorry about that little little slip there. But ye are come unto Mount <clears throat> Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. To God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that speaketh on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. <clears throat> I'll continue on in just a minute. Uh, as I got tongue-tied there and, and uh, said the wrong thing, uh, he's telling them, says, look, you have much more in Jesus Christ, so come to Jesus Christ, leave the law behind. Um, Look what all you have in Jesus Christ. You've got heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, you've got God the Father. You've got God the Son in Jesus Christ. So stick with Jesus Christ. Don't go back to the law. Uh, that's what he's telling them here. Look what all you have in Jesus Christ that you don't have in the law. Uh, these This... Uh, innumerable company of angels. I, you know, I've never seen an angel that I knew of. May have seen one as it talks about in the next chapter, unawares. Um, but I've never seen an angel that I know of. Uh, and here you have angels, you have God the Father, you have God the Son, you have heavenly Jerusalem. You know, we have new Jerusalem lay, laying ahead for the born-again believers in Jesus Christ and a life with Jesus Christ there. So why would you want to go back to the law that didn't offer you none of that? You know, why would you go back to that? And that's what he's warning, warning them about. Stick with Jesus, and, you know, you, you can't... Uh, is, the law, people didn't escape the judgment of the law, and how are you going to escape if you try... How are you going to escape the judgment of God the Father and God the Son? Uh, Moses, when he spoke, you know, people were put to death under the law. And he was a man here on earth. But you, one day, there's a judgment, the great white throne of judgment, that a sinner will stand before. There's no hope at that point. The Christian will be judged according to his stewardship. Um, I'll be judged uh, about this lesson. Did the did I present God's word accurately? I had that little slip up there before, and I, I apologize for that, and I ask forgiveness for that. I, 
uh, I hate I did that, but uh, am I accurate in, in God's Word here? Did I study? Did I, did I uh, prepare for this right? Uh, when I go to work this afternoon uh, and I'm on a job, am I a witness for Jesus Christ? Am I doing my job as a way that, that reflects Jesus Christ? Or am I going to go up there and just lazy around? Uh, I, I give an account for that. Um, my Christian stewardship, I give an account for. Uh, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, first and foremost, that's that's there. That's there for me. My salvation is there. But I also give an account of my stewardship for the Christian. But the unbeliever, he is going to stand before God in judgment at the great white throne. Um, and your works are not going to hold up. <clears throat> Verse 25, uh, I'll read that again. Seeing that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they... See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake... I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Now he's referring back to, if I can pronounce it right, Haggai or Haggai or however you pronounce that Old Testament prophet, I think in chapter 2. But Mount Sinai, if you read in uh, the Old Testament, Mount Sinai, uh, I think it's in the book of Exodus, it shook. Uh, God shook that mountain. But he's saying, I'm going to shake the earth again and heaven. And uh, what he, I think he's referring to is the tribulation period. Uh, and this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, but those things which cannot be shaken, may, that those things which cannot be shaken will may re remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be removed, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence, and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. God one day is going to shake the earth. It's kind of like, you know, you think about shaking a rug. You shake the dirt out. Uh, one day during the tribulation period, this earth's going to be shaken. Christ is going to come back, and he is going to set up a, up a kingdom which cannot be shaken, which will remain. And th that is a great thing. That's something we're looking forward to. And uh, the only way you can be a part of that is put your faith in Jesus Christ fully, as Gene Brammer says, Jesus plus nothing, minus nothing. Um, Brother Mickey always preached, you can't mix grace and works. You can't mix the law and and grace. They don't mix. And that's one thing he preached for many, many years. Stuck on my mind. Um, if I didn't learn anything else, that was a key thing that I learned from Brother Mickey. Uh, was that you cannot mix the two. You had to fully rely on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Uh, should we live a Christian life uh, respectably and as is in a way that represents Jesus Christ? Yes, I should because I definitely am going to stand before him one day. Uh, but if you want to stand before him in salvation, you must accept him right now. And it's a very easy thing. It's just putting your faith and trust in him uh, repent from the old life and turn to Jesus Christ in the new life. His Spirit will indwell you. You will you will be a new creature in Christ. And if you do that, I certainly encourage you to do that today. If you haven't, uh, let someone know at the church if you do, and uh, we'll be glad to hear that. Uh, thanks, uh, Tanya and Jeff, for watching. Appreciate you guys. Uh, thank Tanya for posting these things on uh, the YouTube and she posts the uh, messages from the church on uh, the Facebook and YouTube. I don't know too much about the Facebook yet. I'm still learning it, but I uh, hope everyone has a good day and maybe Lord willing we do this again. Hopefully we won't have no internet trouble. <laughs>